Hey guys, what's up? So today we're actually going to be going through uh, section one of the CXC syllabus, which is number theory and computation. And we're going to start with the first objective, which is distinguish among sets of numbers. Cool. So we're pretty much going to go through the sets of numbers, which are natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, and real numbers, right? So we're going to pretty much go over exactly what these are and uh, have a little discussion about it. All right. OK, guys, so we're going to go through the first set, um, which is a set of natural numbers. And it's another name given to the set of counting numbers and is represented by the symbol N. Right. So pretty much that's how it looks. Uh, some people write it like this, which is like a little line before the N. But pretty much this is the symbol for the set of uh, natural numbers, right? So I'm going to put what this includes. So remember, it says a set representing counting numbers, right? And it's represented by the symbol N. So the counting numbers are 1. That's how we start counting, right? By 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, right? All the way to as large as possible, okay? So pretty much that's the set, um, the set of counting numbers, and you can count pretty much to infinity, right? So that's the set. It starts at one. It doesn't include any decimals. All it includes is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to as large as you can think of or count to, okay? So that's the set of natural numbers, cool? All right, so we're gonna move on to the next set, but just for reference, let's just put N here, which is a set of natural numbers. I'm going to put one, two, three, dot, 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 meaning it goes on to as large as possible. So this is a set of natural numbers. Cool. Awesome. So the next set is a set of whole numbers, right? And it is a set of natural numbers or counting numbers and zero. So it's pretty much just like the other set, except it includes zero. Okay. All right, and the symbol used to represent uh, whole numbers, right? The set of whole numbers is W, okay? So let's just write that out. W, right, is equal to the set uh, of natural numbers, which is this entire set, cool, including zero. So we're just going to add zero to it, and then we're going to say one, two, three, all the way to infinity, right? So it goes as big as possible, as big as you can count, of course. Uh, great, so that's zero, one, two, three, all the way to infinity. So it includes, the set of whole numbers includes zero, cool? So we're gonna move on from whole numbers. Okay, cool, so the next set is a set of integers. And the set of integers can be accepted as a set of negative and positive natural numbers and zero, cool? The set of integers is represented by the symbol Z. So Z is equal to the set of negative numbers. So let's start at negative three, negative two, negative one, but it's all the negative numbers that we can think of. So it would be negative four, negative five, negative six, all the way to negative infinity, right? And zero is included as well. And the set of positive integers, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all the way to infinity, right? So that's the set of um, integers, right? And it's represented by Z. All right, guys. So now we're going to be looking at the set of rational numbers, right? Okay. So the set of rational numbers is really the set of numbers that can be written as fractions, okay? It is really the set of negative and positive fractions. What does that mean? Uh, I'm going to explain it in a moment. And the set of rational numbers is represented by the letter Q. Cool. So basically what it's saying is this. Q, which is a set of rational numbers, can be represented by all of the numbers that are fractions, right? So let's just give some examples here. 4 over 4 is a fraction, right? But we know that 4 over 4 is equal to 1. Cool. So this is clearly in the set. 
let's use some other examples, right? Negative 2 over 3, right? And negative a half, and 2 over 5, and 6 over 11. So these are clearly in the set. Cool? All right, so let's just look at this set of Q now. And let's just think of all the possible things that are actually in this set. Cool? So decimals are in the set. So 0 0.6 would be in there. Um, 0 0.8 would be in there. Because remember, decimals are just ways. Uh, they're just a different way of writing fractions, right? So fractions and decimals are pretty much along the same line. If you didn't know, now you know, right? So 2 over 3 would be in there as well. Um, 1 over 4 would be in there. 4 over 4, which is the same thing as 1, it would be in there. And all the negative um, style of these numbers would also be in there. So negative 0 0.8 and negative everything negative here. So we're pretty much just going to write a... a we're going to write a statement that covers all of these options here, okay? And the statement would be n over d, right? Where d is not equal to 0 because you can't have anything with the denominator 0. Uh, you're going to get an undefined number, right? Which is not a real number, which is not a rational number at all. And n and d, right, are elements of z, okay, which is the integer set, cool. And also, n and d have no common factor, okay. All right, so that's pretty much the set for every rational number we can think of. All right, so we're going to be looking at irrational numbers. Now, the set of irrational numbers is a set of numbers that cannot be written as fractions, okay? Now, this sounds pretty weird, but there are actually a lot of numbers like this, okay? Okay, so let me give you an example of this, guys. Pi is an irrational number, right, which is 3.14, but as we know, Pi does not uh, stop at 3.14. It goes on forever, like 1, 5, 9, 2, 7, and so on, and so on, and so on. And it goes on forever, dude. Literally forever, <laughs> right? Um, but let me give you an example of a number that also goes on pretty much forever, but it is actually an irrational number. Cool. So 1 over 3 is 0 0.33333 forever, right? But this can be represented as a fraction, fraction, right? While this can't be represented as a fraction, dude. Seriously, this you can't put this in a fraction, bro. This is just a random specific number that goes on forever, okay? Now, pi is one of those special numbers. Cool. You can't represent it as a fraction. All right, and what symbol do we use to represent irrational numbers? We use Q again, but we're going to use Q in a different way this time. We're going to call it Q prime, okay? Which is basically everything outside of Q in a way, right? Uh, but we'll soon get to sets and, and kind of explain that. So Q prime would be equal to, we're going to use the representation of all the numbers cool uh, it's also represented as i as well all right so some people say i so let's just put a q prime or, or i right i is kind of nice you know i is pretty pretty decent i sounds nice i represents irrational so that really makes sense and it would be n over d right, where d is not equal to 0, and n and d are elements of z, and n 
and D have no common factor. Now this is the same set as um, the, this here is actually the same exact set as the set of um, rational numbers, right? So we basically want everything outside of that set. So basically, I or Q prime is everything that's not in that set, okay? So everything that's outside of that set. So instead of saying that it's equal to this set, we're going to say that it's everything that's outside of that set, right? In this case, so I or Q prime, let me just remove that down here. So I or Q prime is not equal to everything within here, right? So it would be everything outside of there, which is basically um, root 2, pi, and all the other nice stuff, right? Root 7, root 2 over 7, and so on, right? All the stuff we can't represent as uh, rational numbers, okay? All right, so we're going to be looking at real numbers. So the real numbers, the set of real numbers is the union of the set of rational numbers and the set of irrational numbers, and it is represented by R, okay? So this is the last um, thing we're going to be looking at, guys. So R is equal to, pretty much it's the union of Q and Q prime, right? So we're going to go into what a union is. Basically, you pretty much know what a union is right now, right? When you add two things or your two things come together, they're a union. So everything in here and here are what represents R. Cool. So basically, R is just every number that you can possibly think of, man. It should represent uh, the square root of 2, right? It should represent 2... It should represent uh, decimals, which is like 2.5. It should represent fractions, which is like 8 over 8 over 2, which is 4. It should represent pi, right, which is 3.14. It should represent just every number you can think of, dude. All the numbers here. All the numbers that we're showing here. Cool? That's what should be in R. So R is the biggest set. Right, and that's pretty much the end of all of the numbers that we need to know for CXC, guys. All right, guys, so that's pretty much the end of the video. And remember to do your best, and God will do the rest. And I'll see you in the next video. Ooh.